Welcome to The Road. This is a weekly podcast of All Saints Lutheran Church. I'm your host, John Pedersen, and I serve as pastor. Each week, we reflect on faith, life, and navigating the road ahead. The language of journey is common when we think about life. It has its joys and challenges along the way, and we all need a little encouragement and guidance at times to keep us going. There's a word in the Bible, asphalia, which means truth, but it's the same root word we use in English for asphalt, if you can believe that is a solid surface that makes travel easier and more assured. And so every week we're going to be exploring elements of faith and life that keep us on the road. Faith isn't about living a perfect life. It's about finding our way, getting through rough spots, but seeking out those great vistas too. You can find my weekly message here, but you'll also find special conversations with guests who have insights on things like wellness, parenting, and living with unique purpose. If you appreciate this podcast, remember to subscribe where possible and share it with a friend. Here's this week's message. Well, happy Ash Wednesday. (laughs) And happy Valentine's Day, too. Ash Wednesday isn't typically uh, one of those days we celebrate or particularly look forward to. There's enough bad news in the world these days and in people's lives already, shootings, War, health struggles, relationship problems, mortality and human sin, we get it. We all see it. Every one of us experiences some kind of distress, pain or vulnerability in our own life for the lives of those we know and love. I was, you know, joking around a little bit with Happy Ash Wednesday, but not entirely because although Ash Wednesday is often a solemn day, We don't highlight human frailty just to wallow in it. We acknowledge it so that we can learn from it and minimize its impact on us. What we avoid and fear ultimately impacts us more than what we address head on. And in the end, ashes are really about beginnings and new pathways. Adam was formed by God from the dust of the earth and anyone who knows anything about Forestry knows that although a fire can wipe out a whole forest in the short term, the ashes from the fire and the seeds left behind can result in a new, even healthier forest in the end. Most of the time when we think of ash, we think of endings. Dead trees, spent wood, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And that's true. But by God's power, ashes also represent beginnings. Beginnings can come from naming reality. In the Old Testament, in a story we heard uh, a few weeks back, the prophet Jonah finally goes to the city of Nineveh and tells them to repent. And as the story goes, when the news reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, removed his robe, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. Then he had a proclamation made in Nineveh, human beings and animals shall be covered with sackcloth and they shall cry mightily to God. All shall turn from their evil ways and from the violence that is in their hands. So ashes were a sign of repentance, turning from sin. God was actually pleased even with people from another nation who were not his chosen people. Nineveh was the capital of Assyria considered an adversary of Israel, much to Jonah's frustration, it represented a new beginning for the people of Nineveh, people he'd gotten used to abhorring and who he wanted to see get what was coming to them. Becoming aware of our need to change and admitting that to God and perhaps even others is a practice deeply embedded in the Christian way. It goes to the heart of what Ash Wednesday is about. There are plenty of moments when we may look at problems and point out ways that other people need to change. Jonah did that. But Ash Wednesday isn't about that. It's about us. The work begins within ourselves first. As a prophet, that's something Jonah ultimately learned as well. But as our gospel for tonight points out, that work isn't meant to be performative. It's not something we do to draw attention to ourselves or shape others' perceptions. Jesus says, beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. 
Whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. The point is simply to ground our faith in a true relationship with God and with others. It's something that we can do together here. It's something we can practice and reinforce so that we grow in this value. In the first reading we heard tonight, Paul was writing to the Corinthians talking about the incredible adversity he had faced along with his companions. He said, as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way through great endurance and afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger. But he goes on to talk about the ways they have reclaimed life and hope in the midst of that. We are treated as imposters and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. So some were criticizing Paul at the time, which might help us understand those words a bit. Apparently they said Paul was very bold in his written words, but in person he was not forceful enough. This led to some of the criticisms he references in tonight's reading that they were treated as imposters, apparently one way in writing and another in person. His critics embodied an approach and tone that was more in line with the cynics of that day, who represented an actual philosophical school and movement. Cynics were known for their biting criticism that wounded. Paul, on the other hand, is seen as too gentle. But Paul's truthful speech does not require him to be combative. He chooses to speak freely with a desire for building others up. On this Ash Wednesday, which is also Valentine's Day, as we reflect upon our own shortcomings, we don't need to do so with a harsh spirit toward ourselves or others. Seeing what needs to change in ourselves does not need to be a source of shame, nor do we need to wallow in it. It provides us with an opportunity for renewal and new pathways that lead to life. Tonight, know that you are a child of God You've been marked with the cross of Christ. The ashen crosses we receive tonight are not only a reminder of mortality and sin, but a reminder that the cross is now empty. Death could not contain Jesus. It's a symbol that points to God's triumph over death. And the cross we receive tonight is also a reminder of the sign of the cross that was placed on our foreheads at our baptisms with the words, child of God, you have been sealed by the, by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. We have been identified and claimed as followers of Jesus and inheritors of God's kingdom. We belong to God and we share in the power of the resurrection and God's power over sin, death, and evil. As we acknowledge the ashes that permeate our lives in the form of missteps, broken relationships, declining health, or whatever form of vulnerability and regret may fill our lives individually and collectively. We remember that new growth is possible out of those ashes. When we confront our own mortality and sin with the knowledge of God's grace and forgiveness, we are strengthened. We are prepared to begin our lives anew. So on this Ash Wednesday, and during the season of Lent, be assured that through your own baptism, God has claimed you as one of his children. His love and his promise of forgiveness is real. May that assurance give you courage to be truth, truthful with yourself and emerge more hopeful and more convinced than ever of God's presence and calling for you. Amen. That's this week's message. You don't have to navigate the road ahead alone. You can join with others at All Saints. Visit allsaintsmtka.org for more information. Have a great week.